Oh, y'all, y'all having a great day today? That's good. That's good. Um, that's good. I, that's good to hear from you guys. Um, oh, how I'm doing? Well, um, your boy is actually doing terrible right now, and I'm about to show you why. First and foremost, I do want to apologize to each and every single one of you guys for not uploading last week, or was it two weeks ago? I don't know. I think it was last week, but I'm yeah, it was last week. But nevertheless, um. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys full detail on what's going on Well, as of right now. There's something else I want to talk to you guys about. Um, that's going to be at the end of the video, so just stay tuned. Alright, so here is what's going on right now. Lexus is broke down. Uh, I haven't driven it for a week and a half. Um, first and foremost, the reason why I broke down is because the starter, which was really an absolute nightmare to replace. And I want to give a huge shout out to the homie TJ for coming through and helping your boy out. Um, we went to Harbor Freight um, last week, got one of these ratcheting wrench uh, swivel ends thingies. Um, get you a whole set guys if you don't have one. I promise you it would make your life way much better. If you guys got a longer one, that, that'll be perfect too. So we replaced the starter, all that fun jazz, and you know, as I was putting everything back together, everything went smooth. I saw the car fire right on up and I was like, oh snap, okay, boom. I'm ready to drive this thing. So as I was test driving it, um, I just drove around the block. You know, this is a circle block or whatever. And um, coolant started to leak out um, in the heater hose pipe, the heater hose metal pipe or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what to call it. So um, today I just uh, tore the 1UZ back down again. It was actually way, way much easier than what it was last time because last time it was hard for me, but this time it was actually easy. It took me less than 45 minutes to actually get all of this up and out of the way so here we are right now so this is the um heater hose line or bypass line i do got to get that fixed because i do want my heat back and winter well not winter but the coldness is around the corner but this is what i was talking about coolant actually came i believe through the thing and let me see if i could give you guys a better visual uh you guys are upside down right now hold on i don't know if you guys can see that but this is the hole to the pipe and if you could uh, look down this is where all that coolant spilled and everything so i got a bunch of paper towels sitting here this is the brand new starter by the way and uh i really wasn't going to do a video on that starter because like i said i had a whole meltdown last week and uh bro it wasn't fun but nevertheless i had to take this part out in order to get this pipe out of the way i don't know how this pipe was made and i don't know what this metal thing is i thought i had to put an o-ring on it because this thing was compacted with water pump gasket maker and everything and i think i see why they did it i think there was some type of dent or whatever i don't know how this goes there's some type of dent at the bottom if i can just try to like show you guys um I, camera ain't gonna pick it up but there's a dent at the bottom somewhere and i hate working behind people who already did this job before I did. So now I have to regretfully repack this with this uh, gasket maker, water pump gasket maker. And I don't have access to go to a junkyard right now because uh, your boy is broke. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, put this pipe back in, try to compact it a little bit more regretfully. I'm just gonna go ahead and compact it. Well, not compact, but put some around where the uh, light right here. Not by the O-ring. Well, I'm gonna try my best to stay away from the O-ring, but if I have to, I will. I have no other choice. Like I said, I don't have access to a junkyard, and bro, so th this sucks, bro. This sucks. I'm gonna try my best to do what I have to do to uh, make sure this is waterproof tight or whatever. And uh, I do have to change my gaskets and everything. I don't have the money or the budget to actually get it. I could get it next week and try to like t take this back apart and uh, uh, replace it. I'm gonna show you guys how to do this in another video. I promise you guys. All right, guys, so I got the metal cooling pipe put back together. Got the starter put back together, these two 10 mil bolts. And if you guys are doing this job, make sure to keep this together when taking these two bolts off because I heard somebody on YouTube said if you separate this, it's gonna mess up. It'll be all worth for nothing. Just letting you guys know, I said this before, this was a, uh, a nightmare taking this thing off because you got a bolt back there and a bolt back there. And instead of Lexus having it screwed in this way, they got it screwed in this way. So it's gonna be a hassle to take off. You guys might end up having to take this um, bypass uh, cooling line off, well, whatever you wanna call it. It's a bypass cooling pipe, is what they said. But nevertheless, got everything put back together. Let's go down here. All right, so I was trying to get the best view, but um, everything seems to be intact. So um, yeah, everything is good. I'm just waiting for that to cure. 
I won't be able to drive the car today. I'm gonna just let this junk cure for a whole day, 24 hours. I'm just gonna go ahead, put everything back together and show you guys the results. All right guys, so I got the intake put up here. Everything is good. I didn't torque all the bolts down because I didn't, I only put two bolts down to hold this in and this thing in. So um, everything else is good. Just to show you guys one thing. This is gonna be, like I said, there's an EGR line back here, right here. And this hose that connects to it, well, EGR line, right there, that's the EGR pipe. This hose connects to this thing and everything is just short. There's a little pin, a uh, nibble pin back here. But um, there's gonna be a 12 mil back here. And what you're gonna need to use is, where you at? This thing, swivel uh, ratcheting wrench. Or if you guys got one of those swivel regular wrenches, something similar to this, uh, but it's like a swivel end, uh, that'll work too. But for the most part, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue doing what I'm doing. Uh, everything is going according to plan. I got the fuel lines put in, all that fun jazz. Intake plenum down there has 10 bolts. This uh, top part has 12. Just letting you guys know, I'm torquing them down to 13 foot pounds and uh, it should seal tight. Y'all ready? Yes sir, she is put back together. Yeah, look at that. So, intake and stuff put back together and I got everything good. Um, like I said, I'm double checking myself, triple checking, make sure everything is connected, all that fun jazz. Ain't got no uh, crazy stuff going on. Yeah, so like I said, I'm gonna let that stuff cure and tomorrow, um, we're gonna go for a test run, make sure everything is good. I'm gonna go ahead and wash up. As you can see, I'm filthy. And uh, catch you guys tomorrow. Yes, sir, got her starting. Yes, sir, despite all the ticking sound and everything, like that happened when I bought the car, okay? Previous owner never took care of it, so I had to do the deeds. So right now, um, I'm watching the coolant level. Uh, I got some more coolant right here, by the way. I'm just watching the coolant level. Once it's about that time, I'm waiting for like 15 minutes for this to um, do its thing. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and put some more coolant in there, start up the car, and see if we can go for a test drive. Now, I'm not gonna hold you guys. It was a little bit hesitant when it tried to start up. Normally, like on Lexus, well, let me back that up. On normal cars, you would sit here and prime it, like having on the um, run position, and you will hear a hum for the uh, fuel pump and everything. On these Lexus LS400s, you just gotta crank it over for like two, three seconds, turn it back off, and then crank it over again, and then it starts. In my case, the Lexus was kind of hesitant to turn on. It gave me like four or five, maybe six tries, and then it just snapped on right then. The battery was dead. I had to get my other car over here to jump it, and I, I don't know what happened. I don't even know how the battery went dead, and I got it off the terminals. Um, you know, smart right but nevertheless like i said she starts and she runs all that fun jazz so i'm gonna try to bring you guys along i'm gonna wait well that's after i go ahead and uh fill the reservoir which is still at the same level but um nevertheless like i said i'm gonna go ahead and do all that what i just said and then i'm gonna try to bring you guys along for a ride make sure she ain't overheat okay i filled this up uh filled this back up with some coolant and uh everything seems to be running normal I am running into one issue, one main simple issue, which is actually easy to fix. And that's my coolant temperature sensor. That wire right there is broken. And it's giving me a code. I'm going to show you guys real quick. Uh huh, read codes. Watch this. Boom. Engine coolant temperature sensor, uh, one circuit. It's just one code, um, which I'm happy with. Um, not saying that like I'm actually happy that um, I got that code, but I'm actually that that's the only code that's up there for now. Um, I just got to change it. It's messing with my temperature sensor. I had to uh, mess with the wires a little bit and make it accurate somewhat. And that's actually causing my car to hesitant, hesitantly start, if that makes sense, if that's a word. Hesitantly? Hesitant? I don't know. Also, I was on YouTube looking up um, what can cause my car to have a crank but no start. And I'm looking up here and it says 16 reasons why. And uh, this is one of the reasons, a faulty coolant temperature sensor that can cause my car to crank but no start. And uh, that, I, I guess that's the only issue right there. So it popped through that code and I'm looking at 16 reasons. Now normally you see these things, it'd be like um, about four, maybe five reasons why your car will um, having such a problem well like a certain problem or whatever but like I'm glad that I actually found that one and only problem and it's actually simple to fix so
so it, well it should be simple to fix and as for that connector I'm gonna have to like go to a junkyard somewhere actually get a coolant temperature sensor connector to actually connect that to the sensor itself so I won't be able to have that code anymore my coolant can uh, read the temperature normally like it's supposed to but every all in all the car is the car starts and runs fine okay guys so everything seemed to be going normal uh, temperature is still the same all that fun jazz I actually went on a freeway for a little while put that joker in ECT mode and I, there's no more hesitation I'm at McDonald's right now I'm getting something to eat but nevertheless um, we're good at idle of course I am almost out of gas uh, but yeah my baby is back Woo! alright guys so your boy oh wow the um What's the name? Oh no. Okay, there we go. <laughs> but um, anyways, I'm back at the house. I drove the car. The last clip you guys see me in was um, I was at McDonald's and that was like about an hour and a half ago. That's how long I drove the car and no more overheating, no more problems. She starts up just like that. She's running fine. Well, despite the coolant temperature sensor situation, that's just an easy fix. But otherwise than that, she's solid and she's back. All right, guys. Uh, real quick before I go ahead and um. In the video I do want to go ahead and um, tell you guys what's going on right now regarding the uh, Celica build um, this is a, a huge update I, I really want to go ahead and talk to you guys real quick uh, this is real important before I go ahead and end the video the Celica build is postponed for a few weeks okay um, there's a lot of personal stuff that's happening behind closed doors I'm gonna try my best to explain to all of you guys without throwing too much personal information in there and you know putting everything into detail so here we go. So as you guys know, um, I'm staying with my sister and everything. I don't have a place of my own. And uh, my sister, she she really don't mind me doing what I'm doing, like building cars or whatever. As long as I don't go over the top and mess up her yard or whatever, you know, common sense, right? Right. Hope you guys can relate to this one. Landlords, just throw that out there. I'm not in a place where I can actually do everything that I want to um, regarding with the car builds and stuff and the Celica. Um, the Lexus, I can still do like modifications, you know, just keep throwing content out there for you guys so that way you guys won't think I'm missing or anything because I'm trying my best not to take too many breaks because there's a lot of setbacks behind scene that's stopping me from actually, you know, making videos for you guys. And basically, I'm not trying to have that, you know, continuously happen because basically doing this YouTube thing is a passion of mine. It's not like about money or whatever the case may be. This is something I want to do doing car videos, making music, and in the future, I'm really gonna do gaming. But besides all of that, I can't do much in the place where I am and everything. And like I said, my sister don't mind me doing stuff as long as I'll go over the top. Cool. All of my neighbors know that I do this thing. It's just one neighbor that's that's a, a huge roadblock. He's a huge roadblock. He's literally next door. Let's just say he's the snitch of the neighborhood, okay? Yeah, he's the snitch of the neighborhood. Everybody else is cool. So yeah, that's actually holding up the um, Celica build. But Evolution developed a solution. I hit up the homie TJ. Um, I told him the situation of what's going on right now. And he was like, you know, I can bring the Celica over to his house, put it in his backyard, and then I could go ahead and resume operations from there. The, um, regarding on the transmission swap and the timing belt water pump kit, all that fun jazz, you guys are still going to get that video. I'm ready to drop my Celica again, and I really have to... Go ahead and do this before my inspection comes so yeah i do not want any late fees okay your boy don't want no late fees <laughs> but yeah honestly can't wait to go ahead and get back started with the celica i got everything that i need except for the rear main seal and the transmission seals um i gotta go order those beforehand so yeah that's actually what's going on and what's happening so far so until then i'm gonna continue to do ls 400 content and when it's time for me to go ahead and get the celica back building I got you guys, all right? Don't worry about it. We're going to get this through. We're going to get through this. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe if you haven't done so. Turn on that post notification bell so that way you know every time when I post. With that being said, guys, I'm out. Love you guys. Stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.